I can remember many times after coming up after that choir, it's a hard act to follow, church, but he is excellent. He is better than excellent. He brought us here today through the storm, and we have storms in our lives too, but we have God who is excellent and looks after us. Today is a special, excuse me, this weekend is a special weekend for the St. Bernardine's family and community. First of all, we have two new members being baptized to the church. What a joy that is because the more we get them in early, we can grow them up to be with us. Also this weekend, we celebrate the feast of our patron saint, St. Bernardine's, and also the feast of the Holy Trinity, the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. However, I will start off with a short bio of our patron saint, St. Bernardine, for whom we are most grateful for, and for the Kilty family, we're most grateful for, for financing this church that we are in today. Most of the saints suffered great personal opposition, even persecution. Bernadine, in contrast, seemed more like a human dynamo who simply took on the needs of the world. He was the greatest preacher of this time, journeying across Italy calming strife-torn cities. We can use some of that today, church. Attacking the paganism he found rampant, attracting crowds up to 30,000, following in the footsteps of St. Francis of Assisi to preach about vice and virtues, punishment and glory. At time compared with St. Paul by the Pope, Benedict had a keen sense of needs of the time, along with solid holiness and boundless energy and joy. He accomplished all this despite having a weak and hoarse voice, which miraculously improved due to his devotion to our mother Mary. When he was 20 years old, a plague was at the height in his hometown, Siena. Sometimes as many 20, as more 20 people died in one day at the hospital. With the help of 10 young men, he nursed patients there for four months. He escaped the plague, but was so exhausted that a fever confined him for several months. He spent another year caring for a beloved aunt, and at her death began to fast and pray to know God's will for him. At 22, he entered the Franciscan order and was ordained two years later. For almost a dozen years, he lived in solitude and prayer but his gifts ultimately caused him to be sent to preach. He always traveled on foot, sometimes speaking for hours, two and three and four hours. We're not gonna do that today. <laughs> then doing the same in another town. Especially known for his devotion to the holy name of Jesus, one of his saving, saying, favorite sayings was, there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. He devised a symbol, IHS, the first three letters of the name of Jesus in Greek, and Gothic letters on a blazing sun. This was designed to displace the superstitious symbols of the day. The devotion spread. The symbols began to appear in churches, homes, and public buildings. Three attempts were made to have the Pope take action against him, but His Holiness and Intelligence was evidence of his faithfulness. And also, I want to point out to you, in the middle panel at the top of the tabernacle or the back altar, there's a picture of St. Bernadine, a painting, on the stool, or on the stone, preaching. He's also the patron of advertisement, because in Italy at that time, there was so much corruption and gambling with card games so he had this idea to put the IHS on the back of the decks of the cards, and that would probably curb some of the card playing and gambling that they made. 
We don't know what the results were, but. He was elected to be Bishop of Siena three times, and he declined all the invitations because he wanted to continue to preach. St. Bernardine died in 1444. We want to thank the Keeley family for the finance to build a church, which is dedicated as a memorial for their daughter, who died at the age of six from an infection. Her name was Nora Bernardine Kilty. St. Bernardine's was her patron saint. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, which is annually celebrated on the Sunday after Pentecost. The objective of this feast is there is one God, and in God there are three divine persons. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet, there are not three gods. However, there is only one eternal God. This is a mystery for us beyond our understanding. There have been many who attempted to solve this mystery, which we individually may have never grasped in our lifetime. Maybe when we arrive in heaven, we may know the full story. As our ancestors used to say, we will know by and by. The three divine persons are united in love with each other, a love so strong and unbinding it may be difficult to tell where one starts and the other begin. Their love is a model for us to emulate, to be, reproduce this love with all of God's people. This feast is celebrated at this time in the liturgical year because it may be interpreted as a finale to all of the preceding feasts. The Father calls us to faith each and every day. The Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, became man and died for us. He redeemed us and made us children of God. What a name we have. He remains the leader to whom we are united in all sacred functions. After Christ's ascension, the Holy Spirit became our teacher, our leader, our guide, our counselor. All three persons of the Trinity contributed to and share in the work of redemption. The word Trinity is not found in the Bible. However, if we want to learn about God and the Trinity, we must turn to the Bible where there are so many examples which show the working in the world since the beginning of time. The Bible tells us that God is a mystery of unity and Trinity. The mystery of God is a single God being composed of a Trinity of persons. One of the most familiar biblical references to the Trinity occurs at the very end of Matthew's Gospel. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus said to his disciples, Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. However, the most illustrated reference to the Trinity occurs at the baptism of Jesus. The scene ends with the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven said of Jesus, You are my beloved Son. Luke uses these three images, a dove, a voice, and Jesus himself to present us with a Trinitarian perspective of God. St. Luke also uses this gospel in the books of Acts to present us with a Trinitarian perspective of God acting in human history. Luke presents in his writing, in his Gospels, in the Acts of the Apostles, the idea of three errors. The Old Testament error is the error of the Father. God is revealed not only by word, but by action. God is revealed as a God of love, a God of mercy, and a God of compassion. The Gospel error is the error of the Son, the revelation of God in the person of Jesus, and that Jesus, only Son of God, who alone has seen God. The letter to the Hebrews called Jesus the splendor of God's glory, the very imprint of God being. The post-gospel error is the error of the Spirit. The post-gospel error starts with the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. The followers of Jesus re received a deeper appreciation, a 
of Jesus' teaching, and as a result, a deeper appreciation of God. And our, we are graced with a mighty power inside to speak truth to power and show that Jesus was still at work on earth. It's this deeper appreciation of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit we celebrate today. God is like a parent. To God, we owe our origin and all we have. God is like an older brother or sister who are the splendors of the parents' glory, the very imprint of their parents, the very imprint of God, the Creator. Finally, God is like a constant companion. The Holy Spirit came on Pentecost to dwell in us personally and lead us to the fullness of truth and life. It is this great mystery that God reveals to us through sacred scriptures. It is the great mystery we celebrate today. It is this great mystery that we profess each time we sign ourselves with the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We do this because of our faith and hope in God. Over the centuries, there have been many attempts to give meaning to the mystery of the Trinity. Out of those attempts have been many symbols, such as an equilateral triangle with God at the top angle and Jesus and the Holy Spirit at the other two angles. St. Ignatius of Loyola used the example of three musical notes played simultaneously. There are three notes, but the notes form only one sound. But if one of the notes was taken away, the sound lost its power. St. Patrick used three clover leaves to explain the Trinity. There are more symbols, images, such as circles, overlapping, triangles and circles, single and intersecting circles, and the family used to explain the Holy Trinity. However, the most used symbol is the triangle. The symbol that I relate to more is the circle, which I feel is more inclusive and more protective. It has the flexibility to include our families, starting with our ancestors, from the beginning of time to now and the future generations. However, whatever symbol we use individually, we must remember that we all begin and end with the Trinity, a source of love and unity for all. We are to live as recipients of the love that the Trinity generates in our behaviors and the lives we live. Before I close today, I would like to share the following prayer from the book on Celtic prayer. I think it will be a reminder of the Trinity for us. The prayer expresses the different qualities of the three persons of the Holy Trinity, with some added comments from me. I will say the prayer first. O Father who sought us, O Son who brought us, O Holy Spirit who taught us, and I take a little commentary on O Father Who Sought Us, and it takes me back to Psalm 139. Lord, you have examined me, and you know me. You know everything I do. From far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know all my actions. Even before I speak, you know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. But today, church, God is still seeking us. And it's not about the religion. Let me say that again. It is not about the religion. It's about the relationship and love for and with the Trinity and each other. God wants a relationship with us, and relationships mean community. He wants us to join him in his circle of love. O oh, son who brought us. As the Bible tells us, we are brought at a price. We were brought by the precious blood of Christ, who gave his life so that we would be free of sin. What a gift that is. 
O Holy Spirit, who taught us. In the Gospel of John, Jesus spoke to his disciples and us today. I have more to tell you, but now it would be too much for you to bear. When the Spirit comes, who will reveal the truth about God, he will lead you into all the truth. All that my Father has is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will take what I give him and tell to you. As we leave today, my brothers and sisters, we are part of a larger family, the family of the Holy Trinity, the family of everlasting love, grace, hope, and mercy. Sign up before you leave today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.